There is no better way to understand IV fluid than mixing these IV solutions. What's to the end? What you're gonna learn today is gonna change the way you understand and know IV fluid for the rest of your career. Let's start. So first we're gonna mix saline solution and we're gonna start with what we call normal saline, the 0.9 NS. 0.9 NS, we have a liter of water here, free water here in this jar. And I have nine gram of sodium chloride here. So I'm just gonna throw them there. And then simply, we're gonna just shake it. And now we have 0.9 normal city. So the 0.9 number is coming from the nine grams. So we have nine grams filling 1000 cc of water. That means all of this water, almost all of it, is filled with solutes, right? There is no free water left. Now we're gonna mix the 0.45 NS. And simply here, what we're going to do, we're going to, instead of having a new jar with 1000 cc, I'm gonna empty half of this. I think now, probably, let's say we have 500 cc left. And I'm gonna add, this is 500 cc of free water. Just gonna add it here, all of it. Boom, now you have one liter of 0.45 and as simply now what you have 4.5 gram of sodium chloride in 1000 cc now it's very important i wanted to do it this way because i could have brought another jar with 1000 cc and put 4.5 grams of sodium chloride but this way i want you to see now half of this is free water compared to normal saline. That means half of this is free water has no solutes in it, while normal saline was all of it has soluted it. So remember that. The same thing we can apply it if we're gonna do quarter NS. Quarter NS usually makes by 2.5 grams of sodium chloride in 1000 cc of free water. Instead, I'm gonna empty half of this again. And I'm gonna add another 500 cc of free water. And boom, now we have one liter of quarter NS. Now the amount of sodium chloride is 2.5 grams. Now the free water amount is there is what? 750 ml or 750 cc. So it was 500 in the 0.45 NS. It's very important to understand the free water concepts in each of these solutions. So imagine if you drink this liter now of 0.2 to 5 uh, normal saline, that's as if you drink 750 cc of free water. Using the molecular weight, we can convert this concentration from grams per liters to milli equivalent. So the sodium chloride, the 0.9 NS, will be 308 milli equivalent per liter divided into two halves 154 for the sodium and 154 for the chloride and then you can do the math half of that you get the 0.45 ns which is 154 milli equivalent 75 75 and half of that 75 milli equivalent will be the quarter ns so the more hypotonic the solution is the more free water it contains very important concepts to understand now before we move to the next type of IV fluid solution let's mix the three 3% normal saline. 3% is, so it's almost a triple of normal saline. So you can say anything multiplied by three. So mixing 27 grams in 1000 cc. Actually it's mixing about 30 gram of sodium chloride. Now I have this quarter in S. Remember a liter of quarter in S that has 2.5 gram of sodium. To make it 3% in S, I simply add 27.5 gram and you can see how cloudy it is. And if I taste it, pretty, pretty salty. So now I have 3% NS. And the osmolarity of 3% NS, if I want to convert it to the milli equivalent, is triple, you can say the triple of normal saline, which is 927, but actually it's 1027. So it's pretty close. It's very hypertonic solution. The side effects, if I can say, of 0.9 NS, and this also in half NS and quarter NS is hypokalemia. But also very important to understand that normal saline, the 0.9 normal saline can cause hypernatremia. Why? Because it has no free water in it and high sodium load compared to 0.45 or 0.225 in those you will not see hypernatremia and you will not see even fluid overload because there is no high sodium load. 
also with normal saline mainly 0.9 ns you will see normal anemia metabolic acidosis because the high load of sodium in the proximal tubule the kidney since we have too much sodium let's get rid of the sodium the sodium will drag bicarb with it and it all the way the bicarb will be lost in the urine and remember what we said before that bicarb loss means normal anemia metabolic acidosis and in the distal tubule the sodium will be exchanged with potassium and eventually you have potassium and bicarb loss so you get high hypokalemia and normal anemia metabolic acidosis. Now they start thinking, why don't we make an IV fluid that has electrolytes very similar to the human plasma? And also the problem with saline, we have hypokalemia, we have normal anemia metabolic acidosis, we have hypernatremia. Let's add some potassium, right? Let's add something to antagonize that, the possibility of acid. So they came up with plasma light and lactate drinker. These are the only two balanced solutions I'm going to talk about. And they call balance because they have different type of electrolytes similar to the plasma. Let's start with lactated ringer. Lactated ringer, we're gonna start, we have 1000 cc of free water here, and we're gonna start with the sodium chloride. Sodium chloride in lactated ringer is six grams. You can see compared to normal saline open line, that's nine gram here, we have six grams only. And they said, okay, let's add something to antagonize that parcel of acids. So they add what we'll call lactate. The reason they add lactate, and that's why it's called lactated ringer, because it has lactate. Lactate is a precursor of bicarb and the liver gets metabolized to the bicarb. We have three grams almost, 3,010 milligrams, so three grams of lactate. We have 300 milligram of potassium. Very small amount, very trivial amount. And because of that, the very small amount, do not shy from giving lactate ringer to somebody with hyperkalemia. And also do not expect this to replace the deficit of hypokalemia. It's very small amount, so don't worry about it. And the last thing is adding calcium. And the calcium is 200 milligram calcium chloride, 200 milligram of calcium chloride. And now we have our lactated ringer solutions. And that will be translated when we do the mill equivalent to 130 mill equivalent of sodium, 109 mill equivalent of chloride, 4 mill equivalent of potassium, and I think 2.5 mill equivalent of calcium. Sum them up and we get 273 millismol per liter is the concentration of lactated ringer. So compared to normal saline open line, that's 308. This is 273. So this is more hypotonic. There is less risk of hypernatremia the sodium load is less, there is less risk of hypokalemia and less risk of normal anemia metabolic acidosis compared to 0.9 NS. Now some said this lactate ringer is great but it's not exactly like the plasma, it's missing some electrolytes so let's tweak it a little bit and that's why they came up with what we call the plasma light. So the plasma light they mix 5 grams almost, 5260 milligram of sodium chloride, okay, again 1000 cc of free water. And the next things they added calcium acetate. Calcium acetate is the replacement of the lactate because acetate, also another precursor of bicarb, gets metabolized and delivered to bicarb. So they add almost 3,680 milligram of uh, sodium acetate. So three point, almost 3.5 grams. So we're gonna add this. And then they added calcium gluconate, almost five gram of sodium gluconate. And they added also potassium 370, 370 milligram. And they added another thing, which is the magnesium chloride, 300 milligram of magnesium chloride. So compared to lactated ringer, it misses calcium. It's missing calcium, no calcium, but it add gluconate, it add magnesium as well, and replace lactate with acetate. And of course, mix it. Now we have our plasma light. Now let's convert this to mill equivalent. We'll give you sodium 140 mill equivalent, chloride 98 mill equivalent, acetate of 27 mill equivalent, gluconate 23 mill equivalent, potassium 5 mill equivalent, a little bit higher than the lactated ringer, and 3 mill equivalent of magnesium. You sum them up and you get 296 millismol per liter. So it's higher than lactated ringer, but less, a little bit less than 0.9 ns. The risk of hypernatremia is there, a little bit less than 0.9 NS. The risk of a normal anemia metabolic acidosis is less because it has acetate. 
And the risk of hypokalemia is less because it has potassium. So these are called balanced solution because they have different type of electrolytes kind of try to simulate the human plasma. Now we got a new liter of free water. We're gonna mix dextrose solution. Let's start with 5% dextrose. The 5% dextrose will mix 50 gram of glucose in 1000 cc of free water. So we have it here. So now we got our 5% dextrose solution. To get 10% dextrose solution, we add another 50 grams, right? And then 1000 cc, now we have 100 gram in 1000 cc. This is 10% dextrose solution. Uh, 200 gram is 20%. So that is, it's just simple math. Now the D50 or 50% dextrose solution, you need to add half a kilo, 500 milligram to this jar. So it's be very sweet. So what do we do? Let's do a trick. This is D10, there's 100 gram in 1000 cc. That each 100 ml has 10 gram, right? Let's get rid of 900 cc and leave 100 cc with 10 gram of uh, dextrose. I'll show you how to do it. Let me just empty 900 cc and leave 100 cc. I will assume this is 100 cc now. You can see how concentrated it is and the amount of sugar, and it's probably very sweet. 50% dextrose, whatever amount of fluid you need, half of that as sugar. So we have 100 cc, so I need 50 gram of sugar in 100 cc. Now, remember I have what? 10 gram, right? So I need to add 40 gram to that. And I have 40 gram to that. We can add it here. Now we have 100 cc of 50% dextrose solution. We have 50 gram and 100 cc. And probably it's very, very sweet. Now if we're gonna convert this to milliequivalent uh, using the molecular weight, 5% dextrose solution will be around 253, 252 milliosmol per liter. The D10 will be 504, 504 millismol per liter. And the 50% dextrose will be around 2500 millismol. I think 25, 20 millismol per liter. So it's very, very hypertonic. Now, one interesting fact about the dextrose solutions outside, now in this jar, this is a very, very hypertonic solution, right? But the interesting thing is once you infuse, this is outside, once you infuse it inside, the insulin will be stimulated and the cells will avidly absorb all of that sugar and it will be left with that free water. When it's infused, it's infused whatever the tonicity is or osmolarity is, as isotonic or hypertonic, whatever. But after that, after a little while, all that sugar absorbed and you left with the free water. Now this compared to, let's say, quarter in S, which is very hypotonic, that's very hypotonic from the get-go compared to, the, for example, the 5% dextrose solution, which is isotonic from the get-go, and then a little bit later, it becomes just free water. Very important to understand that. And it stimulates insulin, and insulin shifts potassium intracellularly, so hypokalemia is a common adverse reaction of dextrose solution. You need to pay attention to that. They may produce dangerous hypokalemia. Also, because of that, at the end, you end up with free water. There is no solute. That means no volume. Remember, volume status in the body means sodium. So if the solution has no sodium, that means no volume to support the intravascular volume. The higher the amount of sodium, the higher the amount of support to the intravascular space. We'll come to that later. Now let's move to the next IV fluid solution, which is bicarb. Bicarb is the only one we're gonna mix with 100 cc of free water instead of 1000 cc free water. So we have 8.4 gram of sodium bicarb and we're gonna add it to 100 cc of free water. Now this 100 cc when we convert it using the molecular weight will have 100 milli equivalent of sodium and 100 milli equivalent of bicarb. So we have 200 milli equivalent total. The ampoules that they use in the hospital, they take half of this 50 cc, a syringe, they pull 50 cc, so that 50 cc will have 100 milli equivalent, right? 50 of sodium and 50 of bicarb. They use this ampoule to mix either to push sodium bicarb or to make the drip. Usually when we mix the bicarb drip, we want to make sure it's kind of isotonic. So what they do, they say, okay, bring 1000 cc of free water and push 3 amps or mix it with three amps. Each one has 100 milli equivalent, so total you have 300 milli equivalent, which is pretty isotonic. Or sometimes they said bring half an S, one liter of half an S, so that has 154 of milli equivalent. So we need another 150 milli equivalent, so we can have one and a half amps, right? Each amps has 100 milli equivalent. 
So the total will be 300 milli equivalent. So bicarb can be mixed with free water, 1000 cc of free water, can mix with D5W, remember? With D5W, it's isotonic initially, but when it's infused, it becomes free water, so you can mix it with that, or you can mix it with half an S. When you mix, very important to remember, when you mix dextrose solution with another solution, as if you're giving the other solution only in terms of free water content or electrolyte contents, the dextrose will just give you the sugar. So if you have somebody needs free water, don't give them D5NS. That's as if you give them NS, right? So you need to give them free water. Remember that, or just pure D5W. Now, you probably know that the human serum is around 270 to 290. Some other differences may go a little bit higher or a little bit lower. So anything fall in within that, or a little bit above that, a little bit below that, is considered what we call isotonic, that the osmolarity is similar to the our serum osmolarity. Anything significantly higher than that will be called hypertonic, and anything significantly below that will be called hypotonic. So if we start from the top to down, the, the most hypertonic solution we mix today is probably the D50, right? followed by 3% NS, followed by the D10, followed by normal saline, followed by plasma light, followed by lactated ringer, followed by 5% dextrose solution or D5, followed by 0.45 NS, followed by quarter NS. So based on this, the 0.9 NS, which is a little bit hypertonic, but as I said, it's slightly higher, so we still consider that isotonic, lactated ringer, plasma light, and 5% dextrose solution are considered isotonic. Now the 50% dextrose, 3% NS, the D10 are considered hypertonic, and the 0.45 NS and 0.225 NS or quarter NS, they are considered hypotonic. Very important to understand this. The more hypotonic the fluid is, the more free water it contains, right? The less tendency to stay in the extracellular space, it will shift intracellularly, causing cell swelling. And the opposite is true. The more hypertonic the fluid is, the less free water it contains, the higher tendency to stay or actually will stay extracellularly and will drag fluid out of the cells causing cell shrinkage. Now, what I like about the isotonic, that's what we like about the isotonic solution, that they stay in the extracellular space, they do not cause cell swelling or cell shrinkage compared to the, high, the hypertonic solution. They stay extracellular space, but they drag the fluid out of the cells, causing cell shrinkage. Now, the exceptions to the, the more hypertonic, more hypotonic rules is dextrose solution, as we explained. Once they infuse, they become just free water, completely free water. And remember, the fluid or the water in the extracellular space is divided between the intravascular and interstitium. Quarter of that, 25% intravascular, 75% is interstitium. So whatever amount of fluid you give, whatever amount stays in the extracellular space, only quarter of that will be in, in the intravascular space. I will come to this in detail once we discuss, next video we'll discuss the resuscitation versus maintenance fluid. Another fact I want to mention that the more hypertonic the solution is, the more irritating to the vein it is. But we still can give D50 and 3% NS via peripheral axis if we need. You don't need a central line if somebody hypoglycemic, you do not need a central line to give D50 or 3%. You still can use the peripheral axis, but again, the risk of irritation will be higher and burning sensation will be higher when you give these hypertonic solutions. Next video, we'll build on the basics we learned today and we'll start talking about resuscitation versus maintenance IV fluid and you will see what we said today apply to our day-to-day -day practice. If you would like to receive a summary of this video, please subscribe to my Substack. The link is provided below. And if you find this video useful, please give it a like, share it with your colleagues. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next video.